I was taken to task about the cost of a budget lens. At the time, I was reviewing the 14 to 150 zoom lens, which I priced at uh, 550 pounds. And as I say, I was taken to task as to whether that figure represented a budget price. Now, whether I agree with that or not is not the point. What it has encouraged me to do is to go through my lens arsenal and bring out the cheapest Zuiko lens I have. That is the 14 to 42, which I think on the Olympus uh, website is just over 300 pounds or something like that. So I'm now going to show you a dozen pictures taken with that lens and explain them in detail. And incidentally, I am also recording this video with that lens coupled with the OMD EM10 Mark II camera. So, as far as I can, I'm keeping everything cheap. My first shot is pretty straightforward. It's the sort of image I might submit for a postcard or a calendar. But can I just draw your attention to part of my technique? Note from the information I expose to the left, not the right. I don't go with the flow. Why? Well, I like nice saturated colours for my commercial market. And the other important thing I do is that I spot meter with the help of the electronic finder, because you can see what you are doing. Yes, I adjust my images afterwards in Adobe Lightroom, so I save all images first to RAW, but of course what you're looking at are the JPEG copies. Now this shot is a bit more challenging for any camera or lens. When shooting at night, remember that an exposure meter, even on spot, does not read black correctly. It tends to overexpose it towards a grey. So therefore, to compensate for that, then I underexpose at, by at least a whole stop. The other thing to note, I keep the ISO on 200 and then rely on the image stabilisation in the camera to get a sharp handheld picture at a sixth of a second. And you believe you me, it works. The dynamic range of this picture is huge. Of course, that sky is much brighter than the foreground. So I spot meter for the sky, allow the foreground, the grass, to become underexposed, and then I increase the exposure of that in Lightroom using the shadow or black sliders. Have to be careful, because in doing that, you might introduce noise, which of course we don't want. The other thing to note is that I waited for the sun to go partially behind the cloud. If we saw more of the sun, then the danger is that that part of the picture is going to burn out. But we shall see in the next picture that we've got sun well and truly in focus. Definitely a picture for spot metering. You've got all that dark foreground. So if you are on ESP or Matrix, that is going to affect the exposure of the whole image, probably overexposing the sunset, losing all that lovely colour intensity. The other thing to note is that a zoom lens 
is not the best optic to take a picture of a sunset, particularly as here, if the sun is in the picture. Normally, one would use a prime lens, but I have to say that the 14 to 42 pancake lens has done a pretty good job. I'm often puzzled why other photographers tell you with a certain amount of authority that you can't have differential focusing with micro four thirds. Well, as you can see, you can, even at f8, so that I can preserve depth of field in this leaf from front to back. Because in getting in close, then depth of field is greatly reduced. Of course, we might use focus stacking these days with this short. But look, it can be done with old-fashioned traditional techniques quite successfully and keep the background nicely out of focus. The other advantage of micro four thirds, as we see in this image taken inside Bristol Cathedral, is that you can have enormous depth of field, that is sharpness from front to back, at even factor 3.5, where you would normally expect depth of field to be reduced. Yet the platform or table might be an altar, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, anyway whatever it is, that is sharp and so is the background. Why? Well, I've employed the hyperfocal distance, where I focus about two thirds, no, a third, isn't it? A third of the way into the picture. The other thing to note is this is handheld at a fifteenth of a second. Very often churches and cathedrals do not allow tripods. So time to polish up your hand-holding techniques and perhaps hold your breath as well. I'm quite a lazy photographer. I hand hold everything. The image stabilization in Olympus cameras is truly amazing. Of course, there isn't the luxury of the addition of image stabilization in the lens as you would get with the much more expensive pro models. But here in Fountains Abbey, I have hand held this shot at a tenth of a second. And not only that, I have zoomed in a little bit, otherwise I'm going to fall into the water. That will cause a bit of entertainment, wouldn't it? But the focal length of the lens is 38, so that is 76 in film. And that's my phone going off, by the way. Oh, let's leave the take in, shall we? That will cause a bit of amusement. All Hallows Church in London is the one quite close to the Tower of London. And notice too, my laziness continues into this image because I am on programme. Now because of the low level of light, the camera will still try to give you the fastest shutter speed it can at your selected ISO setting, which as you can see is 200. So by default it's going to go to factor 3.5. However, I needn't have worried too much because the shutter speed I ended up with was a thirtieth of a second. So under most situations I should be able to hand hold that even without an image stabiliser. The detail of this inexpensive lens I won't say budget in case I upset somebody. But even look, even under low light inside this church, it is absolutely amazing. I've had to bump up the ISO to 400. I don't like doing that because publishers do not like high ISO figures. I ended up with a shutter speed of a half of a second. I'm helped a little bit by using the wide angle end of the lens. That will re 
reduce the possibility of camera shake. And I think it's absolutely sharp. What do you think? I live less than 20 miles south of London. Therefore, I can get up to the city at most times. And this is very important when you have a very popular place like Tower Bridge. This is definitely a grab shot. It's a snap, incidentally. And notice I am on program, which will help me. Because in getting this shot, which I think is essential to have without people, I did have to wait a, a little bit, but not too long. And as you can see, I was lucky. I love uh, the challenge of nighttime shots in London, particularly with an inexpensive camera and lens. So I'm not using my professional camera. Again, this is very much a grab shot. It's been successful, but that bus did move a little bit. It's quite close to me. At a fifteenth of a second, I haven't been able to keep it absolutely sharp. And of course, the other thing to note is that I have underexposed by at least a stop. That again helps the hand holding, because had I not done that, then the shutter speed would not have been a fifteenth of a second, but around an eighth, and quite likely the image would have been overexposed. If you've never been to Sky Garden, I thoroughly recommend it. It's at the top of what we call the Walkie Talkie building. I'm sure you know which building I am referring to. I think it was closed during the pandemic. This shot was taken beforehand and it was free to enter, but you had to book ahead. Now, whether things have changed since the pandemic, I don't know. But if it's open, I really recommend that you go and have a look, particularly towards dusk, as we see in this picture. Notice, too, I've underexposed by two whole stops. Otherwise, those illuminations are going to be overexposed. The other thing you won't see, I hope, is that I have to shoot through glass. So you bring the camera as close to the glass as possible. Unfortunately, there's a very bright bar just behind me, and there is a danger of getting reflections in the glass you are shooting through. But I have been very naughty. There were one or two, and I have taken them out in Photoshop by cloning. Well, that's the end of the selection. I hope you have enjoyed it and have found it helpful. I was once told to my face that I'm not a real photographer. I, of course, asked why, and the answer was that I didn't use a tripod. Yes, all the pictures you have seen are handheld. But the other thing I am definitely not when it comes to photography is that I am not a snob. I don't have to use the pro lenses and cameras the whole time. And indeed, when you get to your late 70s and go on a long trip, you sometimes look for something a little bit lighter. And I have to say that the EM10 with the 14 to 42 pancake lens absolutely fits the brief perfectly. And best of all, the publishers I work with are quite happy to use them. As one publisher once said to me, Derek, I really don't care what damn camera you use. So long as it looks right on the computer and we want it, we shall use it. So there, take that. <laughs>